This video is sponsored by Bowers and Wilkins. Check the link in the description to join the PX headphone giveaway. You guys are going to need a wireless pair for this Kindle. Hey everybody, this is Erica the technology nerd likes to film stuff and right in time for Christmas, Amazon released the new Kindle Oasis 2017 edition. So let me preface this review by saying this is my most favorite Kindle ever. So you can probably see where this review is going. I love dedicated devices and now they have just made my favorite dedicated device more immersive with the best screen Amazon has ever put on a Kindle. But it's still certainly not perfect though. So I will give my thoughts and hopefully I can help you decide if this is the Kindle for you. So I'm going to give the TLDR first. Too long, didn't read. So basically this is a water resistant metal Voyage and it's got a one-handed design and it's also got the addition out of Bluetooth and extra storage. To me, it feels like the true upgrade to the Kindle Voyage, where this was really a beta device, the first Oasis. So specs, how about specs? So we've got a seven inch display now. They have always been six inches in the past. I don't remember there being a different size display. It's 300 pixels per inch, just like the newer Kindles. So yes, they increased the display size to seven inches, but they didn't just stretch it and give you a lower PPI. So I think that it looks really nice. And we've got three different models for this Kindle. So we've got an eight gigabyte model that has Wi-Fi. We have a 32 gigabyte model that has Wi-Fi. And then we have a 32 gigabyte model that has both Wi-Fi and 3G. So there is no 3G variation in the eight gigabyte configuration. I thought that was a little bit unfortunate. So the price range of this device is between $249. This is the one I have right here, eight gigabytes with Wi-Fi only to 349. That's pretty expensive for a dedicated device. So the previous and original Oasis they had four gigabytes of storage for all of the models. Now they have upped the storage in anticipation of you loading audiobooks on here. So we do have audible support now. Now a regular Kindle book will be several megabytes in size where an audiobook is going to be like 200 megabytes or so in size. So it makes sense. Also in specs over the last Kindle, we've got a dual core processor now, one gigahertz. So the device should be faster with page turning. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And we've got lots of sensors on this Kindle. So last year we did not have an ambient light sensor. And now this device you can set auto brightness on just like you could with the Voyage. Although honestly, I prefer to keep this off mostly because it's kind of finicky and I don't like it deciding for me, but it's really nice to have that. We've also got an accelerometer just like last year to quickly change the orientation of your screen. It's also got a hall sensor in it so that if you put it inside of the case that's supported by Amazon, it's got a magnet in it and it will turn it off and put it in standby. And when you lift the cover, it's going to turn it on for you. So that's a feature that I've always really loved to have. This device also has lots of radios, even more so than last year. So we've got Wi-Fi, we've got 3G, and now we also have Bluetooth in addition to all of that. So there is a lot of tech inside of this little dedicated device. And all of this tech has to be powered by a very modest sized battery. I believe that this is a thousand milliamp hours. So you can imagine that you can drain this as quickly as you want to. And we will get into that. So let's look around both of these devices and compare them a little bit. The first thing I was very interested in is how much heavier is this unit? You can see that we've got this aluminum unibody to it. And last year, this is technically plastic. It's got metal in it, but it's plastic coated. So let's go ahead and grab my gram scale. So original Kindle Oasis says 134 grams and the newer one. So 134 up to 195. And then of course we have the cases. We can compare them with two. Now with the case on, this is Amazon's case, it's 312. So 312 with it on, 195 with it off. That does add quite a bit of weight to it. And again, the older Oasis was 134. And with the case on, it goes from 134 to 236. So for the whole enchilada, it's 312 grams versus 236. 312, 236. I feel that it is significantly heavier, but it's not terribly so. And I feel that it's very well balanced. And we can say that because most of the weight is right here in this one handed portion. I've got small hands. I think it still fits well. So it's quite a bit heavier, but it's really not bad at all. Now, a little bit of a confession. I actually like the older body from the original Oasis better than the newer one. The reason is because it's grippy. 
Now, the new one is cold, hard aluminum, and the first thing my husband did when he held it was almost drop it, so it can be a little slippery. And I also don't like that it's... See? Look what I almost did. And I also don't like that it's quite cold if you don't touch it for some time. Another thing is that the original one was not sharp feeling at all. It didn't have this premium metal feel to it, but if you look at the edges here and you feel them, they're actually kind of sharp, especially if you're having it sit in your palm like this. They did chamfer them, thankfully, so it's not pin sharp or anything like that, but it's not as soft against the palm as it was last year. So I do prefer the way that this feel. It's more book feeling friendly, but obviously this one feels much more premium. So what I'm going to be doing to kind of remedy the situation is just to get a skin. I feel like if I get a nice matte or glossy skin, I'm not going to feel that cold metal as much, and hopefully it'll make it a bit more grippy. There's also plenty of third-party cases that have a little bit of a lip. So just keep this in mind. It doesn't really feel like a book. It kind of reminds me more of an expensive smartphone. Moving on to looking at the buttons and ports. We've got our page turn buttons. They have a really nice tactile feel to them. I very much prefer these tactile buttons over these touch capacitive buttons that we had on the Voyage. These were not bad at all, but I like that secure click much better. Then looking at the top, we've got the power button right here. The older Oasis had both the power button at the top and also the micro USB charging port. They've moved the USB charging port down to the bottom here, but overall it looks very clean. Not much more to it. Then taking a peek at the back of these devices, again, aluminum unibody. Very nice and clean in appearance, also shiny. And the original Oasis was a fingerprint magnet. You can see that this plastic finish here really likes to take on my fingerprints. And this grippy part here also got very scratched looking. So after a while, it was impossible to keep this unit looking nice unless you put a skin on it. And then we've also got an area right here for some pogo pins for charging. This is for the case accessory. So if you've noticed, gone is the need for those charging pins. So that brings me into talking about the new cover design and it's actually quite interesting. So now it's just simply a cover and it's got a magnet inside of it. We've also got this little part here that bends, kind of like an origami cover, so you can turn it into a stand. But there's no battery, so we can just slide it on in place. It sticks with the magnet. I always make sure that it's seated properly. People complain that the magnet is not very strong, but I've been finding it to be okay as long as I'm not really jostling it about. If you do that, yes, it's going to fall off. But as long as I make sure that it's secure and in place, I can kind of move the cover about with no problem and even swing it behind and it's fine. Even bending out this little spine right here so that it can be used as a stand. It's not falling off. So you'll have to let me know if you have one of these covers already, if it's been really poor with staying on. Mine's not been so bad. I think the thing that I immediately noticed with this new cover is that it's nice and flat to the whole design. It looks like a continuation. One thing that really bothered me about the original Oasis, that once you put this back cover on, you can see it's it's not a continuation. It's kind of strange, has weird angles to it. So I really was not so much a fan of that. One thing that I am a really big fan of is no longer needing this cover. Note though that this cover came in the box where you actually have to buy this one separate now. And you needed this cover because it had, really, most of the battery in it. You've got a very small battery in the unit itself, and then you've got this that helps to top it off as it goes. But the way that this worked was so fidgety and just an annoying burden. One of the reasons this just did not work out well is that sometimes it just did not want to charge, or the battery cover wasn't recognized. Or if it wasn't seated properly and I tried to charge the unit, which would charge and then also charge the battery. If it wasn't seated right, this battery would not charge. So that was the most incredibly annoying thing possible. I'm so glad that they have everything all inclusive. The battery is all in here. What was kind of cool though, when you selected this, is you can see that you actually have percentages of your battery. This is something I haven't seen the Kindles do. You can see up here that you've got the battery indicator but it doesn't really mean anything. We can't tell how much of a charge there actually is here. 
So because of having this battery back cover, we actually were granted the ability to see what our battery percentage was, where now we no longer have that ability. So that stinks that we've lost that. If you go here, you can see that nothing. So we're stuck again with that silly little indicator that doesn't mean much of anything. So after getting all of the necessaries out of the way, let's move on to talking about these standout features that make this my favorite Kindle ever. So the first thing is definitely the Audible support. I've been a fan of Audible for years and I've been a member for years, so I'm really happy that I can now load audiobooks on here and I can choose between reading the book or listening to it. So right here I have The Hobbit and you can see that there's a little icon that shows headphones. So when I click on that, that means I have paired them both together. I can choose between listening and I can choose between reading. You can't do them at the same time though. It doesn't have the immersion ability where it highlights the lines as it goes like you can on smartphones or on iPads. So here you all are still. But if you can't read on the go, you can easily just tap right here and it's going to pick up where you left off. The only thing though is that you don't have a headphone jack on here. And right here, this is micro USB instead of USB type C. So you can't use USB C headphones. You've got to get yourself a wireless pair. And that kind of stunk because I didn't have a wireless pair of headphones. So thankfully Bowers and Wilkins were wonderful and they sponsored my video and gave me a wireless pair of headphones called the PX. So not only are these wireless, but they are also noise canceling headphones too. So I can tune out the background and continue listening to my audiobooks or even music with less disturbances. The PX has three different noise canceling settings, office, city, or flight with custom tune voice pass through. So I can personalize my ambient sound preferences. This way I can get the best experience when listening to my books on the go in many different environments. They respond to touch and wake up when you pick them up. So if I need to switch from reading to audio, it happens seamlessly, which I really appreciate. And when you're listening and you lift a cup, the audio pauses so you don't have to backtrack in the audiobook that you're listening to if you do get interrupted. So these are quite cool. So if you're curious to check these out, visit BowersWilkins.com PX for more info. And I'm going to put a link in the description below. There's also going to be a link for the giveaway of a pair of these headphones. So you have a chance to win one of these as well. So thank you again so much for sponsoring my video BNW and for the giveaway. Now the next standout feature is obviously this display. This is my favorite display that I've ever seen on any Kindle ever. This is gorgeous. It's seven inches. It's 300 pixels per inch. It's an e-ink display. So because it's 300 pixels per inch, it's just as sharp as the other newer Kindles. But what really struck me was just how uniform this looks. We've got 12 LEDs instead of 10, like on the previous Kindle. And this is the most uniform looking display that I've seen on any Kindles. The gripe that I really had about the Oasis is that it really had a lot of splotchiness and shadows and it was not uniform at all. Even having a lot of weird different color temperature issues. But I have not had that issue whatsoever with this new gorgeous seven inch display. I'm sure there will be variations of people saying that theirs isn't as nice as mine, but there are good ones out there. This is fantastic. Now in terms of contrast, it's really good, but it's not as good still as my Kindle Voyage. When looking at various things, the Kindle Voyage is still just a little bit darker in appearance, especially with things that are probably supposed to be dark gray or black. But still, there really is nothing to complain about. What's also about the size of the screen is that obviously you can fit more text on it. So it's very immersive. I don't have to switch the pages as often. So I can fit a whole ton on here. I never do this. I more or less like larger text. And I like some bold there. But what's really nice is that because this is larger, I can get away with having larger text without having to switch pages so often. So this is absolutely perfect for me. So here we are with the same text side by side, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, zoom in just a little bit. And for the heck of it, why don't we bold too? So you can see this still looks pretty much normal, like a full page of text where this just gets to be kind of claustrophobic. So this is awesome. Another thing is that when I'm comparing the brightness side by side to my other front lit models, this one appears to be just a little bit brighter than all of them. And that's not surprising. I think really my one gripe about this display is that I wish that there were some warm LEDs so that I could switch to those during nighttime. So they still haven't managed to do that. 
But with this display, you can see that we've got auto brightness now where we did not have that on last year's model. And auto brightness is nice, but I choose to keep it off. A feature that I'm really glad to have back though that was on the Kindle Voyage is called Nightlight. And so it says gradually decrease the screen brightness over time as your eyes adjust to the darkness. And this is something I used to use all the time. So it starts out brighter. And like it's saying, as your eyes are getting used to the dark, it will dim it for you. So that's a feature that just really is nice and makes sense to me. Now just a little bit on the accelerometer. Before it used to be really, really sensitive and it's just the same now. It's that same sensitivity. I don't detect any difference. It's exactly the same. I was never really bothered by it anyway, so it, it's, it's fine to me. I think that the most annoying part though is that there is no option to disable the accelerometer. I don't think it would be such a big deal if they would give us that option. So moving right along, we finally have water resistancy, although Amazon says that it's actually waterproof IPX8 and it can withstand immersion up to two meters of fresh water for up to 60 minutes. So that's beyond six feet. And what I find really cool is that they've tested it in many different types of situations and other than fresh water. So you can take it to the beach and get it wet. You can get chlorinated water on it and it's not going to damage it. I have plenty of water resistant smartphones and they say don't get it near any of those types of water except for fresh water. So it looks like they've designed this to be a little bit more resilient. So if it gets wet, they just say to dry it off. If it gets submerged, they say to make sure it's completely dry before you try charging it. And if it goes in salt water or chlorinated water, make sure that you rinse it well with fresh water and then let it dry. So don't use a blow dryer. Don't be blowing on the ports. Just gently tap it, let the water come out. And afterwards, it's just fine. I tested mine already. I tried it in sink water. But realize though that the water is going to interact with the touch screen. It gets kind of wonky. Buttons start being pressed, pages start being turned. So when water is on the screen, it's not the easiest thing to interact with, although it works really well still with the buttons. Just dry it off a little bit and it's just fine. But don't expect to be able to use the touch screen underwater. So now lastly, let's talk a little bit about performance and battery life. This has got a new processor inside of it. The original Oasis had a single core processor. This now has a dual core processor. From what I've seen, it's one gigahertz with 512 megabytes of RAM. And really the appeal here is to have faster page turns. And for the most part, I find that that's true. So I can start turning pages and you can see that the new one is just a little bit faster. I don't think it's incredibly noticeable. So you can just see, there you go. Just a little bit faster. But the interesting thing is that it doesn't appear to be faster everywhere and it kind of varies. So if I'm just going about the interface, for example, often the older Oasis will finish first. And the same thing will go for graphic intensive type novels. I'll notice that the original Oasis will change pages just a little bit faster sometimes. Not sure why that is. And then sometimes the new one will get a page in there more quickly. So if anyone has one of these, let me know if this is something you're experiencing or maybe if I need to exchange mine. Touch, go under settings, touch. So it's about the same on that part. Device options, touch. So overall, I would say that performance varies, but in general, this is faster, just basic page turns. Touch. There you go, interface lags a little bit. Don't know why. The settings and everything are the same. So how about battery life then? Well, Amazon says this can last six weeks. Now keep in mind though, that that's with the antennas off and also with brightness at 10 and staying at 10. So with all those parameters in mind, yeah, it can last six weeks, which equates to a half hour per day. So that's 21 hours of battery life. So for me, I'll read three hours a day. It'll last me like a week and that seems pretty standard, but this has a lot of high-end tech. So if you are turning up this display all the way, it's got 12 LEDs now instead of 10. So you can imagine that's going to use more power. It's a bigger display, probably uses more power. We've got another radio for Bluetooth that's gonna use more power. It's got a dual core processor, arguably that could use more power. So all those things together show that you can really drain this battery quickly, especially if you start playing audiobooks on this thing. And I've tried it a little bit with just really revving this thing up and using all the settings full blast, I can get it to drain during one day. So you can get this thing to last as modestly as 
six weeks at half hour per day. Or you can turn everything on, have the brightness at full blast, listen to some audiobooks, and you're going to drain it within several hours. Now realize I haven't had long-term experience with this, but I can tell that if I turn everything off and I go by their parameters, it's going to last me about what they say. It is nice, though, that it can charge quickly. For me, it's charged in about two hours to 100%. But overall, realize that they're saying that this is a six-week battery and this is eight weeks. That is when you combine it with the back cover. So this actually has a smaller battery in it. It's a thousand milliamp hours than the Oasis when combined with its back cover. So that does make quite a big difference. For most people, it'll be fine. Just turn off all the bells and whistles if you want it to last a very long time. But for me, I don't care. I like using it at full blast. I will charge it every night if I have to. That doesn't bother me. So now we are approaching the end of this review. I love this device. This is absolutely my favorite. I'm debating on whether I will exchange this and get the 3G model. Mm, it's $100 more. It's an excellent and powerful little device. And it's hands down got the best screen on the market. So if you have one of these, let me know what you guys think about it. This has been Erica, the technology nerd, likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Again, let me know what your back cover experience has been like. And have a good day.